My name is Ben Callamer. I'm a local film critic uh, in Phoenix with uh, the Movie Review. I am joined today by uh, one of the actors and one of the directors of cinematography from the film. Gentlemen, would you mind introducing yourselves? My name is Jakub Krejča. Um, sounds exotic. It isn't. It's something like Jacob Taylor in your language. And it's actually not my first movie with uh, Roman Nemec with our director. It's uh, already the second one. So the cooperation was like kind of really easy going. It was more like family like. I already knew everybody uh, in the crew. So it was like really nice to do. Like when, when I take a part like this movie, I'm usually doing like a series uh, for German television because I'm bilingual, like German Czech. So usually I'm playing a bad guys, like uh, Nazis, you can say, typical German soldier. Or I am playing um, a funny, like fluffy, um, you know, like gay guys, which is <laughs> this case. So I just really enjoy this part. Wonderful performance. Uh, please. Uh, good morning. My name is Wojciech Hrnčiš. I'm one of our cinematographers uh, for uh, movie Where Butterflies Don't Fly. I'm currently 22 years old and I study cinematography at one of uh, Czech universities. It was my first feature film and first cooperation with uh, director of the movie Roman Nimetz. So yeah, a lot of first times. <laughs> your character, Jakob, uh, is apart from your partner. Can you talk a little bit more about how you went ahead to prepare for this particular role, knowing your castmates and, and being a part of that troupe? You know, like we met for the first time in 2017 with that particular cast. And during that time, you can imagine like a long-term friendship did happen. So that's maybe why we look so familiar. We did met also on, on a, a different kind of sets or theaters, um, stuff like that. So we know each other. I know uh, Daniel, which is playing uh, the lead character. And I know also Wojciech. So that's maybe why it looks so familiar, because it is actually. Um, how I did prepared, honestly, like this is one of the role where I play myself. So what you will see there is actually me at home. I will let you judge you if, 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 if it's nice or not. <laughs> you can be the judge of that. But uh, I didn't actually have to prepare so much. Um, the, the good thing was that uh, Roman is really particular about what he wants and, and he always like put it into the script and, and he communicates it with you. So it's really easy to work with him because you have like the clear um, like borders what he wants, but he still managed to somehow, somehow apply on, on your characteristic. So it's really easy to work with him. One of the things that struck me is that um, you're a very grounded individual. And uh, as you just mentioned, that comes through in your performance. Um, uh, you seem uh, like a very uh, happy individual, a very um, vivacious individual, full of, uh, full of vitality. And um, uh, even though even though you might have had uh, your character was in a smaller part of the film, your presence is still felt uh, throughout the film, especially as they, as characters traverse into the cave, um, doubts arise about whether things should happen. Um, and that, that was a very structured and nuanced part of the film that I very much appreciated. Um, one of the other things that caught my attention um, for, for we as American audiences, as we watch foreign films or films in foreign languages, um, the visual style becomes much more important, A, because we might not necessarily be familiar with the language the film is in, but B, we are drawn more toward the character dynamics and the imaging um, that the cinematography department handles. And I want to say, um, as a first-time cinematographer, I want to congratulate you on the look of the film, um, because uh, it, it, it's a very controlled environment when you're in a cave. Um, it was more open when you're outdoors, uh, but you have a really good eye 
for um, capturing subjects. And I really appreciated that attention to detail. Thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to add that I'm uh, only one of the cinematographers. Uh, there were uh, two more, Karel Pobřislo and Petr Benja. And uh, it was like a team effort, I would say. So yeah, uh, it was a pleasure to work with them because I've learned so much from them. And yeah, we've kind of co cooperated to uh, achieve this, this kind of look uh, the movie has. I noticed that there were um, three cinematographers assigned to the film. Were you assigned to shoot specific scenes in the film that we see in the final film? Um, or was it a collaborative effort all the way through? Mostly it was a collaborative effort, uh, but yeah, the, uh, there were days uh, where uh, only one of us uh, was on the set. Were there uh, any particular scenes that are in the final film that you can talk about where you were alone as a cinematographer? As for me, I, uh, I ended up with uh, shooting the extreme ones in like extreme conditions. <laughs> uh, so for example, uh, when uh, Adam uh, fell underwater uh, into mm -hmm. the cave, uh, yeah, we showed that uh, it, it took, I think like five hours to, to shoot it. And uh, it was my first time uh, scuba diving. So apart from shooting underwater, it was uh, another challenge that uh, I had to like overcome. And um, then for example, when there's uh, like uh, this climbing course uh, in, in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's also something that I, uh, I shot myself. Uh, when we were uh, climbing uh, the, the mountains. Uh, and then, yeah, then some of these uh, scenes uh, in the caves, for example, in the tunnels, where you really couldn't, uh, there were places where you really couldn't move uh, with anything because it, because it was so narrow and you could only move forward by uh, moving your toes. And that was the only way you could move forward. I imagine that when you are inside of a cave like that, where there is no natural light, um, lighting becomes very critical, um, in part because of digital cinema, but also in part because you want to capture uh, the subjects um, as best as you can, uh, and as they say, in the right light. Um, and uh, how difficult was it for you uh, on this film, in, whether alone or uh, with the cinematography team, how difficult was it for you to be able to judge how much light was needed so that it didn't overpower a scene um, or take away from the detail? Well, as for the lighting, it was, uh, the main challenge was that we couldn't uh, bring like, uh the usual lights you would use on set because of the extreme condition, because there was, uh, there was cold, uh, there, there was moisture everywhere and little particles of dust that would destroy uh, these, uh, these lights. So we could only use uh, LED lights, but only the LED lights that uh, aren't that expensive to, to you know, change or, or repair or buy new ones because yeah, uh, in these conditions, uh, those lights would uh, get destroyed a lot so uh, we've only we, we only got to use uh, these like cheaper LED light and that was the biggest challenge because uh, those sources are not as powerful as the usual ones so we had to improvise a lot but it turned out quite good. Uh, as I said I was impressed um, uh, by and large, uh, we, the audience, spend a good 50 to 60 percent of the movie inside that cave. And um, the the other the other aspect that I alluded to a moment ago uh, is that you only have two subjects and there's a lot of action that happens on the on the set. Um, but there are also a lot of still moments um, where we are thinking about Jakob's character and his influence uh, on the, the main character. But there are a lot of still moments um, in the various sequences. Um, were there any logistical challenges 
with shooting the um, the more still sequences where the characters aren't moving about necessarily within the frame or uh, from left to right or right to left, but might be moving around on the ground in a sleeping bag. Um, this is an LGBTQ audience, of course, so I have to bring that up. But uh, the more intimate scenes, were there any logistical challenges with shooting that? As for these um, static uh, scenes, uh, it wasn't that big of a challenge because we've shot them uh, all at, uh, not, not at once, but, uh, you know, at uh, like a few days apart. Uh, and... Um, yeah, it wasn't that difficult because we we've usually had just one uh, lighting setup, and because uh, the actors were in a sleeping sleeping bags, they uh, they weren't cold. So, yeah, that was another advantage of it. Uh, it was uh, more difficult with uh, the moving scenes uh, where there was there was a motion because uh, we had to light the scenes with uh, uh, we we had to light like a big part of of a set you know mm -hmm. and we've tried to uh, to stay as natural as as possible uh, so it would look uh, uh, so it would reflect uh, the conditions that uh, are in caves and the lack of light uh, that there is well uh, a job well done um one final question with specific reference to the cinematography what kind of uh, specific direction did you receive from Roman in terms of preparing for the shoot? Um, did uh, Were there storyboards involved or uh, were a lot of decisions made on set um, that might have affected what you had planned versus what we actually see on the screen? Uh, well, as for uh, this kind, of, this type of co uh, cooperation with Roman, it was great because he had uh, storyboards for everything, and he he precisely knew what he wanted. And uh, we've put a lot of time uh, to preparation. So uh, when we came to set, we we've, we've known exactly what what to do. Uh, but sometimes there were moments where we had to improvise because, for example, the lights wouldn't wouldn't be able to use them as we intended. Uh, so we had to improvise a few times, but uh, most of the time, uh, everything was really well prepared. Uh, Jakob, uh, a similar question. You, as, as I've mentioned, you bookend the movie, really, but your presence is felt all throughout. You're there at the beginning. Uh, there's a very comfortable relationship between the two of you uh, in your flat. And then you appear again without giving away any any of the the movie secrets in case somebody watches this before they see the movie. You appear at the end again. Um, and then uh, for audiences who haven't seen this, there's a post credit sequence, which I thought was really beautiful because uh, it symbolized um, all of the visual markers that make up the film. Uh, the struggles of the LGBTQ community, um, I imagine in uh, the Czech Republic, just as much as globally, um, this is a very universal film. How did, did your approach change at all from the beginning of the film to the end of the film in terms of um, how you approach the character? Um, or was it more uh, that uh, the scene allowed you to play uh, a, a variety of different sides of yourself. You know, it's like, uh, for me, it's kind of a personal team because uh, as I said, what I did play there was something what is like really me and I did go through something really similar. I think we as a LGBTQ community, we know that there are some situations where uh, you, so to say, don't exist as partners there are some communities where you don't tell it or uh, there are even some relationships which uh, are like taking ages they are they are for age together and uh, like in the public they don't exist so to say so that's something what what happened to me uh, recently and i did have like this uh, breakthrough which you will see in the movie as well so it was like really personal and i think like since the 2017 the character that developed also because of this because the relationship like my relationships is taking place 
like uh, almost since since that time and it did go through the same dynamic um but yeah what i wanted to say, say maybe like when we were talking about cinematography and and, and trauma and like mm -hmm. like this particular or this particular scenes like he is really particular about like what what he wants in the movie and and what what he wants he gets so to say but sometimes you have like a small surprise uh like um for example, uh, we did shoot a scene and like then in the script was like, uh, David is driving a car. And I was like, wait, David, that's me. And he was like, yes. And I was, I was like, I don't have a driving license. And it was like a day before, you know, and it was actually like a few days after we, we uh, shoot uh, like the, um, the bed scene like mm -hmm. together. So it was already like way too much to process for me. And, and he was like, yeah, you have to learn to drive. And it was like until tomorrow and he was like yes let's go to the let, let, let's go here it's like a big place like let's go there and let, let's teach you drive so actually they, they were like some kind of specific which you will see in the movie and, and it's for me it's almost like a fantasy movie you know because i'm driving the car there and i'm really driving it and, and you have this big camera in front of you and you are still trying to play the character and be emotional you know but yeah. you don't want to kill anybody in the car because you have like five people in the car mm -hmm. hidden there so yeah, uh, the character, back to your question, did evolve a lot. And I love the scene which is coming after credits. I love it. First of all, it feels a little bit like, like uh, you know, like these Hollywood movies, which always have like the scene after the script. Like, wait, you have to read all the names which mm -hmm. were part of the movie, and then you will, you will get something sweet. So I love that scene. And it was like really personal for me to shoot it as well. That's awesome. I'm what you would call a credit snob. Um, I will sit through all of the credits at the end of the movie because without both sides of the camera, um, a figure of speech, of course, but without both sides of the talent on both sides of the camera, um, we wouldn't have the movies that we have today, the stories that need to be told, um, the experiences that need to be shared. And that's one of the things that I, I love about Desperado and about film festivals in general is that audiences get a unique opportunity to visit for us far off places that we might not otherwise be able to travel to um, and experience other parts of the world and the lives that people live. And, um, uh, you know, the, this movie, again, is far more visual than it is uh, dialogue driven. Um, it's very heavy on character. Um, those characters are very rich. Um, and yes, the post credit sequence, which I'm glad I stuck through the credits and um, I, I could figure out some of the credits, um, uh, but I don't know Czech. So um, that was kind of a stretch for me. But I, I, I could figure it out fairly well. But after the credits rolled, seeing that end sequence, it made me very happy because what I imagine that scene representing is not everybody, uh, it is not only everybody being able to come together uh, and celebrate the movie, but it's also, I, I guess at the risk of repeating myself, it's a celebration of the joy that is inherent in the journey that all of the characters take and all of the technicians and craftspeople took to make the movie. And um, uh, even though I haven't had the opportunity to meet uh, Roman, um, his presence was felt throughout the film, but especially in that end sequence, um, uh, the post credit sequence, uh, because it felt like uh, this was a difficult shoot and um, it was really a celebration. And uh, I just, I appreciated that I'm droning on here. Um, and you could tell that all of you as actors were really, really relaxed. And um, uh, I think appreciated the opportunity to be able to uh, give this movie to the world and allow us to uh, share in that celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Jakob, you were talking a little earlier about getting into character 
um, it being as much uh, a reflection of yourself as the character that we see on the screen. Did you have a scene that you did other than the, the post credit sequence that um, you felt was a really genuine moment uh, between you and uh, the lead character in the film? Honestly, like there are two of them. The first scene which I loved was like the the scene where where they are like just themselves at home and it's kind of like chilled. That's something like I think everybody wants to have some some partner where you can like just relax yourself. And that's a scene I loved to do because it was like kind of like chilled afternoon, you know, it was easy to shoot. We did enjoy that, we did laugh a bit, and it was like natural. Um, somebody said that my butt looks great there in the scene, That's... so why not? <laughs> but, <laughs> but then uh, what I really enjoyed and what was like really funny and was almost like an exercise for me was like the, the best scene uh, which we have uh, with Wojciech because, you know, they look great on the screen, but shooting them, it's... It's almost like a choreography. It's it's almost like a sword fighting in, in the way you have to like learn for a choreography that the camera doesn't see some some flies or or something what, what um, shouldn't be there. So that that was actually what I did enjoy on another level because it was so technical and and so funny in the end that that, that scene took like almost a half a day. So those are like two scenes which which uh, I really liked to shoot. I did I, I did hate the, sh the the scene in the car. <laughs> I, I was afraid that I will kill somebody. <laughs> I couldn't feel your nerves as an actor driving for the first time, and um, you handle it like a pro. Thank you. Absolutely. One of the other things that caught my attention, uh, and I was just thinking about this, was. Um, when you had to repack his backpack with everything because he couldn't fit everything in. And uh, it just struck me that um, packing, like, uh, packing for a trip like that, um, you have to be very organized. And David comes across as being organized, but perhaps more rigid. And he needed your character to help with the details. And I just appreciated that because um, that to me signifies love, compassion, understanding. Um, there's probably a little, oh, just give me the bag, I'll get it organized for you and, and send you on your way. Um, but I just love that, that particular sequence of unpacking and repacking because those are the types of details that make the movie what it is and make the movie special and unique. I think that's something what is in every relationship special that the couple have something together. One is like a little bit different than the other one and then kind of it, it fills in. And that's what it was, that scene. Like. Well, I want to thank you both very much for your time. I, I know you have uh, both have busy schedules. Again, thank you for your flexibility. I really enjoyed the movie. I can't wait for audiences to see it um, and uh, to, uh, for us to be able to share your movie um, with, uh, with audiences here. Um, do either of you have any parting words to share with our audience? So guys, enjoy it. If you are claustrophobic, take some pills. But um, enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. It was really fun to shoot it. As for me, I would like to thank, thank you for having us uh, here and uh, at the festival. And I hope you will enjoy the movie. Thank you both very much. Um, uh, I enjoyed the conversation. And uh, again, I look forward to sharing this movie with, uh, with audiences here.